Yo, what is up, Canes fans? It is the beast the morning after the Miami Hurricanes pulled one out against Virginia Tech last night at Hard Rock Stadium. Let's just start from the end and then go back to the beginning because the ending is what we'll all remember. Uh, I said in the press box as Virginia Tech started their last drive, I'm like, this is going to come down to a Hail Mary, right? Like, this, that's that's what's happening in this game. Um, and yeah, it, it did. Drones for Virginia Tech did a good job of moving them down the field to get in position for that last play. And, you know, we're all, I, there was multiple timeouts before that play. I don't know, it was two or three, but th there was timeouts after timeouts after timeouts. And we're all sitting in the press box and we see like a number 43 on the field. And I'm like, who is that? And, um, Brandon O'Doy, my uh, partner here, you see his uh, his name down down over there. Uh, Brandon has his binoculars. He goes, "That's I Isaiah Horton." I said, oh, oh, "Okay, okay, we're doing that. We're putting putting wide receivers uh, out there to play to play defense on the Hail Mary." Um, and then all hell broke loose from. Now, our point of view in the press box, if if you can imagine what Hard Rock was when it was pro player and it was a baseball stadium, the press box where we sit is where behind home plate. So the south west corner of the stadium is where the press box is. So we were we were right there. And from our vantage point, it, it just it didn't look like really anyone caught the ball like it was moving around and then by the time it did settle it, it, whoever had their hands on it was out of bounds that ended up being Isaiah Horton the in the end the ACC got the call right the thing that befuddled me and everybody else is how could they rule it a touchdown to begin with and my only answer for that is I mean you have to make a call right like you can't just be like we don't know because that's that's not how it works. You, you have to make a, a definite call. Either it's a touchdown or it's incomplete. I, I feel like um, in those circumstances, they're going to call it a completion. So in this case, a touchdown and then review it. Right. And that's what they did. And they got it right. Um, it's, I think it's the one time in the history of Miami being in the ACC that ACC officials got it right. And, you know, Virginia Tech fans are all over the place. Um, and, and I get that. It sucks to be on the end of a crappy call. Like, you know, Don Cheney's knee being down before a fumble and then not taking a knee. Anyways, Miami won the game. And... You know, I think we learned a lot about this team from that game because it's the it's it's one of those times where you know, I think over the last couple of decades, since about like 2005, 2006 where Miami wins that game because more often than not over the over that time span when Miami gets down, when they start to, when momentum is with the other team, it's an ACC home game. Miami loses that game. They just had no mojo in those situations. But last night, uh, they found Mr. Mo and were able to overcome a ton of mistakes to win that game. I mean, just from the get go, from the start of the game, Miami seemed sluggish. Cam Ward, I, I asked Mario about it post game. If you watch the post game press conference on the YouTube channels, on our YouTube channel, or my YouTube channel, Brian the Beast London has takes or whatever it is. Um, I asked Mario if if Cam Ward if he was pressing. Now Mario said no, but from from what I was seeing, it looked like Cam Ward was pressing, like he was trying to do it all. Um, he was not taking what was open to him and trying to make plays in other ways. And sometimes they worked and sometimes they didn't, but I counted three or four times early when guys were easily open, 
he would have had no problem hitting with the pass where he decided to do something else that was tougher, harder, and it it just wasn't working early. Um, and then on, on the defense, um, your your secondary, which we we thought was going to be the weakness on the defense, really started to it it looked like it, and um. They had all sorts of injury issues. Guys were going in and out. It was extremely humid. It's the second game in a row where um, the weather is coming to play. And guys, I mean, there was cramping all over the place. Um, and you just had too many missed tackles. I mean, guys, sacks were being missed. Uh, tackles being missed left and right. It just was not a good performance, especially in the first half by the defense. And, and like, like for instance, Mish Powell, who you expect to be the guy back there to get everything right. I mean, even Mish was uh, missing some stuff, and it just that game had a bad feel from the from the get go. And you know, Brandon and I have talked about it. I've talked about it on the podcast, so we keep going. So rewind. Just to let you know, Brandon and I actually recorded a recap show last night from the stadium, but uh, that got that blew up somehow in some electronic way. In some, it's on some SD drive that can't be pulled off somewhere. There's that. So I'm doing this. But Brandon and I, over the course of our podcast in the last couple of weeks, have talked about that. Um, there, there was going to be a game like this. That it was going to, you know be a flip of a coin of whether you won or lose it was going to be too close to call it was going to be one of those games where you're tested we didn't think it was going to be virginia tech but you never can predict those things and again i'll just remind everyone the best team ever 2001 miami hurricanes took a miracle to beat boston college close against virginia tech like they didn't win every game by 50 points so it happens i mean you know georgia and kentucky last week it 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 happens this is a good, like the best teams don't always uh, win every game by 50 points. So, you know, it's okay. This just because last night's game was close isn't a sign of, isn't a sign necessarily of things to come. Now, maybe it is. And if that's the case, well, maybe this team isn't as special as we think they are. But I don't think that's the case. I think, I think they will regroup and, and work on the mistakes that happened last night um you know it, it, in the end we saw the best of cam ward but we also saw kind of the worst of cam ward right the miami turns the ball over three times cam throws a pick that i don't know what was happening there um he was baited into throwing that that pass um pretty much by the defender and the fumble i mean he that was the the knock on Cam Ward, the scouting report on Cam Ward, when there were even rumors that he may come to Miami, is that, you know, you start looking at at what he had done at Washington State and he fumbled the football. So, you know, it was bound to happen. Um, but on the other hand, again, another night of passing for over 300 yards, f- four passing touchdowns, and another rushing touchdown. Um, he's an unbelievable quarterback. And I think I, I know it's cliche to say the, the one thing about Cam Ward is he's got moxie. Like he just he does not let situations bother him. And he's going to find a ridiculous way to get this team over the top. I mean, that drive, you had him somehow hitting Xavier Restrepo on the ground, who's on his back, who catches that. And then you have basically a basketball chess pass to Riley Williams. I I just, the plays that he makes are just, it's, it's Josh Allen esque. It's, it's Patrick Mahomes esque. It's just the, that level of ingenuity of improvisation. um, Listen, I'm not going to say that he's going to end up being those guys, but it's that kind of, uh, I'm I, I'm gonna find a way to 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 get this done. It, it it you know it may look ugly. It may be a side a sidearm throw. It may be 
uh, a chess pass, but it's it's going to get done. He does that. He has moxie. Um, and yeah, he just he didn't get phased. And that's really important because we have had quarterbacks in the past 20 years that would go into the proverbial jar after they made a mistake and they could never recover from that. That's not Cam Ward. That's just not him. Um, I, it was good to see Shannon Dawson go into his bag of tricks a little bit last night. We saw some uh, pretty interesting plays, finally using Chris Johnson, I think in a way that you need to use him on that reverse. Um, yeah, there was, there was, there were some good, good calls by Shannon Dawson last night too, that, that helped the Miami hurricanes. The bottom, the bottom line is this, because I could talk about this game forever is it was a close game that in the past Miami would have lost. And last night they won and they're five and oh, I think, are they the only five and O team in the country regardless? Um, but you just personally, and I think those of you that, that have been through this journey of the last 20 years of Miami hurricanes football will, I think, understand where I'm coming from, where, you know, there's a ton of people that are like, wow, this Miami team, I mean, they are going to make a run. This is a historical team. This is, you know, Cam Ward, Heisman, Ken, all of this stuff. Like, I, I just can't wrap my brain around it because I'm so shell-shocked from what we have been through. Um, you know, going back to, uh, what was it, 2017 and, and – uh, beating Notre Dame and feeling like you, you're on top of the world and then you lose to Pitt and, you know, there goes all that. And I'm just, it's sad to say, I'm, I'm waiting for the bottom to drop out because that's how shell-shocked I am. Now, it may never happen, but you just, you don't know. So I can't be cocky Canes fan. I just have to be... um you know, just take a, as they say, one game at a time, right? Everything is just, it's each and it's, if I start thinking ahead of time, I'm going to get myself into a tizzy. So it's one game at a time. Cal is up next. Um, you know, there's some interesting storylines there that we'll get into later in the week on the podcast, but you have Mendoza, who is a Columbus, uh, a Lo Columbus kid, right? from South Florida who has a chance to, you know, growing up, he probably thought that he should go to the university of Miami and he ends up all the way across the country at Cal. He'll have something to prove. You know, I think Ott, their running back is, is really when he's healthy is one of the best in the country. I really like that kid since he's been at Cal. So it'll be an interesting game. The other thing is, listen, um, my best friend, in the entire world, my brother from another mother, the best man at my wedding, uh, my boy Justin is a Cal alum and lives out there in the East Bay. So I go out there a lot. I go visit my butt a lot. Um, you know, I'm Uncle Beast to his kids. And I can tell you this. It takes a bit when I, you know, even though I've done it a bunch, it, it still for me takes a bit to get adjusted to the time difference and this is a wacky deal right it's it's 7 30 cal time that means it's going to feel like 10 30 to these miami hurricanes when they get out there um what are they going to play like it's prime time or like it's almost time for bed that's going to be interesting to see by the way uh in talking to my boy justin uh you know every one of his friends and his old fraternity brothers and everybody that's that is going to the game because i've convinced them they should go to the game uh they're all upset that it's a night game they this is not what they do out there they like a nice nooner uh maybe have a mimosa some some chardonnay uh walk over to the stadium watch a little football maybe leave at halftime who knows and uh, go on about their day. This it's it's definitely a different attitude towards college football in the Bay Area. Um, so we'll see what it's like out there. Um, I'll be out there uh, covering this one because when you have a free place to stay uh, and you get to see your uh, 
your mishpoha, as they say in Yiddish, uh, you, uh, you you take that opportunity. So I'll be out there. But the Miami Hurricanes are 5-0. and That's all that matters. And Cal is up next. And you, if you win that one, well, now you're halfway through your season already. Um, and you're, uh, you're set up, you know, pretty nicely um, with a nice bye week um, before you uh, continue the rest of your ACC schedule. And that game against Louisville is uh, looming in the distance. That seems to be the one that everyone is looking at as the possibility of uh, where, is, where could Miami lose? Well, maybe it's Louisville. But, you know, as we saw last night, any given Saturday, anything could happen. Uh, so there you go. All right. Uh, let's work, let's work on our tackling kids. Can we do that? All of you out there in your living rooms, practice your tackling, please. It needs to get done. Thank you. All right. That'll do it for me. Hey, do us a favor. If you are love the Canes coverage, do us a favor, go to wherever you get podcasts, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Audible, wherever it is, go subscribe to the real ones. Canes podcast. You see the, uh, the title. It's right. It's right there. Um, go find the YouTube page. You can find my YouTube page. Just type in Brian, the beast London or real ones. Canes podcast. There's two YouTube pages and I've been doing my stuff on TikTok as well at Miami radio beast. Follow me on X at Miami radio beast. Go follow Brandon at Brandon underscore Odoy. I, you know, he's not here. Uh, so I will give you a tip. Uh, Brandon has his hand in a lot of different places as it relates to the sport of football. Um, one of them is football hotbed where he um, he puts on um, middle school uh, football camps and 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 all star games and all this stuff, which means, you know, he's he's he knows these kids from from when they were we tall. Uh, he also um, does a great thing in getting a lot of kids from South Florida, he takes him on trips to go see schools all across the country. He knows every coach in the country. He's been on their campuses. He knows every kid. So uh, the information you get here on the Real Ones Canes podcast is coming from a really good place, from a guy in Brandon that has a lot of sources that are uh, are top of the notch. And pretty much, I think I think, better than anyone else out there. Um, because the only people that would know more or have more connections, uh, like on the official school broadcast, they're not allowed to say what uh, we're allowed to say, and they're not allowed to tell you what we're allowed to tell you. So there's that. Just take that for what it's worth. All right. That'll do it on the recap show. We will see you this week coming up as uh, Miami takes on Cal. Peace.